Today, there's a plague of violence that needs to be stopped. Uh, did I lose my speech? And that is why we're here to launch a revolutionary program to finally share the safety. I'm honored to introduce Hensley Cocker. Thank you very much, Todd. And uh, Hello. thanks to you all for coming. Hello. You guys have definitely been spotted uh, by security. Oh shit. We gotta get out of here. Hey! Where, where's the exit? <laughs> The hoax was an elaborate Hundreds one. Hundreds of oil executives were duped today. I'm Andy. And I'm Mike. Ever since the 1990s, Mike and I have been impersonating big and powerful Mr. Osmond, people. Mr. you're not even on the directory. You don't even have a phone number. It's come to that, has it? We're con men for a cause. It's a group of pranksters who call themselves the Yes Men. World-renowned troublemakers. Sick. Twisted. Because sometimes Ooh, it takes a lie to expose the truth. Billings. My phone number is... What the fuck is my phone number? So every time there's a mass shooting in the United States, the NRA holds a press conference and says the problem is that there are not enough guns. ...to put armed police officers in every single school in this nation. Thank you for calling the Reagan Library. This is... Uh, hi, My name is Todd Billings from Share the Safety. Um, I'm in L.A. now. Okay. And we want to go ahead with this, but I'd love to come up and have a look at the facility. When the police around the country started getting a lot of attention for killing unarmed young black men. On the streets of Ferguson, Missouri, outrage and anger. No justice! No if the NRA were true to what they usually say, they would say, like, let's arm all the young unarmed people who are being killed by guns. The solution is to arm them. Uh, I actually have to get your event approved first. I see. Okay, great. Great, well, I look forward to seeing you around two o'clock. Thanks, All right, bye-bye. Okay, thank you, Todd, bye. Okay, she said that it's not going to be a problem, but they do have to do a little bit of a vetting process to get the thing approved. So I think that we should probably put up a temporary page at sharethesafety.org for 24 hours, if possible, and just make it seem like something that's totally about just safety. <laughs> Is there a way to just swap the website out with just a placeholder page? It feels so dirty. Don't worry, we'll buy some time with a, a priest or something for you, okay? <laughs> we are here in Southern California. You gotta make me look like a, an NRA spokesperson. Because we are going to impersonate the National Rifle Association <laughs> <laughs> at the Reagan Presidential Library. Yep. It's starting to happen. You want me to look like King Leopold? Anything could be fun for a night. <laughs> <laughs> what do you sound like when you have a beard like that? Oh, right. Well, uh, <laughs> fuck the children, get the guns in there. I don't know. How oh, hair is really We decided good. to name our initiative Share the Safety. And for the past few weeks, we've created business cards, drafted press releases, and built our website. You know, the website is basically a buy one, give one program, just like Tom Shoes, but for weapons. The gut does not play nice. We even shot a Share the Safety promo video that was just absurd enough to feel like something the actual NRA might do. These days, the most endangered species is the law-abiding American citizen especially those living in poor urban centers. For a moment, people look at it and they wonder if it really is the NRA. Dumb laws keep the urban poor unable to acquire life-saving firearms. That's why we at the NRA are teaming up with Smith & Wesson to share the safety. When you purchase a limited edition line of Smith & Wesson handguns at sharethesafety.org, we will donate an appropriate firearm to an at-risk, low-income citizen in the urban center of your choice. You know, when you first brought this idea up, I remember laughing a lot and then thinking like, mm, we may not be the right ones to do this, you yeah. know? Because there's so many black people in the NRA, how could white people represent the NRA, right? That's what you were thinking? <laughs> 
There is one black person in the NRA. His name is Colin, Colin Noir. If you don't think an AR-15 is the best way to protect yourself, by all means, don't get an AR-15. But don't tell me that I can't get one. Colian makes us laugh so much because the NRA has a really big black problem. There were these two guys who founded it who were really appalled at what bad shots Union soldiers were. Yeah, they sucked. So they created the NRA to train people how to shoot better. And then in the 60s, things changed because suddenly there was a lot of racial tension in America. And actually the first gun control legislation of the modern era was passed in response to the Black Panthers who were going around armed. And the NRA helped write it. Yeah, they the NRA helped, helped write gun control legislation disarming people. Yeah, and in 1977, those terrified people take over the NRA. They were able to vote out the former leadership which was suspected of having gone soft on the gun control issue. And Our said, now what we care about is the government attacking us. Why did they talk about the government? I thought they were afraid of black people. I've, you know, it was like really not appropriate to say that you're afraid of black people. So then they had to say, yeah, we're actually afraid of the jackbooted government thugs coming in and taking over. And so we've got to have guns to prevent that. No national gun law has passed this year. If we will stand together for what is right. We are here at Politicon. I want to get to the bottom of this fear, figure out why are we all so afraid? Yeah, what do you think they're going to say? I don't know. Excuse me, can I ask you one quick question? Uh, what are you most afraid of? Hillary Clinton. Anything else, like a uh, bigger picture? Muslims. Muslims, okay, anything else? Uh, pretty much it. Really? Yeah. So when you feel, how do you know that you're afraid of those things? What kind of question is that? Because I think, because I got a brain. Okay, Ugh, didn't <laughs> quite know what to do with that. <laughs> that was grade AAA fear, awesome. Excuse me, what are you most afraid of? Afraid of? Mm -hmm. um, Probably a government that's getting too big. Mm -hmm. Over over government influence. Over government. government. Yeah, government overreach. Hmm. Yeah. I know what that feels like. It's like, ah, I don't know what will happen. Yeah. It'll like, yeah. yeah. Like I'm impending doom. You know, ultimately, yeah. the problem in all this is fear. I am worried about letting in people from alien cultures who don't share American values. And that makes me sad, and that makes me angry, and that makes me afraid. And more, more specifically, it's acting on fear. If the criminals are going to have guns, I don't want them. I don't want to be disadvantaged when two people break into my And house. people, by and large, believe, I mean, gun owners, they're afraid that the government is going to come bash in their doors and injure and maim them and stuff. Like, if, if you had, like, an AR-15 or something, mm -hmm. and then I had, like, a grenade launcher, would you be scared of me and my grenade launcher, or would no. you? No, I'd actually feel much more safe the fact that you have a grenade launcher. Uh, I believe that from a Lockean perspective that individuals in nature have the right to protect themselves with whatever weapon they so choose. A, a, a fighter jet if they want to. I mean, who can afford that? But well, even if you're a wealthy individual, you could decide that you need a nuclear weapon. Right, and that's fine. Yourself. And that's fine. And that's fine, yes. So we've, I've just set up the burner phone for the NRA here. And so I'm going to call Andy. Hello. Uh, this is Hensley, yes. Hello. You're gonna ream our face. Are you gonna f fuck first or ream first? It works. That's the phone number for that's Hensley. Fucking great. Yeah. Wait, that's the burner phone? That's the burner phone. In Virginia. Virginia. Yeah. This is the first time we've done anything about gun control. Mm -hmm. But new NRA videos are coming to our attention and we're going like, holy shit, what the fuck is that? that is that mm -hmm. the real NRA? A lot of people say they're not going to vote this November. Well, I know some other people who won't be voting this year either. They talk about how there's monsters. Literally, they use the word monsters. No target is too sacred for these monsters. Violent criminal thug and every other monster. After Orlando, they released mm -hmm. a whole bunch of AR-15 propaganda about how everybody needs an AR-15. Hillary Clinton says weapons of war have no place on our streets and that we need to ban AR-15s immediately. Unlike Hillary, I've actually used an AR-15. It's easy to learn and easy to use. It's accurate. So this is their, their crazy logic, but it sells a lot of guns. Which is why the NRA is so insanely well-funded. 
It's this really elegant little circle of fear and terror. Good morning, good morning. This is the day that we're going to represent the National Rifle Association at the Reagan Library. Oh, else there's my beard is on the table. <laughs> See, this one's not in bad shape besides it being dirty and stinky. It's not, right? It's not really stinky. All right, I'm done. So in addition to the event that we're about to do, we have to have a press release going out at the same exact time to 150,000 journalists. So I'm probably going to kill time at the beginning when everybody's in by talking. Just talking. Also have an amazing Twitter bot. Anyone who tweets hashtag NRA will be engaged with a really human seeming, but also slightly unhinged Twitter bot. Some might say that in light of recent events, it's the wrong time to launch a whole new program. The beard thing is always weird because yeah. you just don't know. Like, is the beard going to be good enough to fool anyone? Hi! How you doing there? I look like I should just be really poly. <laughs> this way, you know what? I look like an Orthodox Jew. The invitation went out to a large number of um, gun aficionados, let's call them. Gun nuts. Die, infidels of America! <laughs> Oh, I've never no. done that before. <laughs> One of the reasons they won't freak out, I think, is that they're there to agree with us. They'll be excited. They're on side. Yeah, we no. are the NRA. Look, it's the famous Pacific Ocean. We should probably jump in the ocean. Yeah. Should we just do that to celebrate if we pull this off? <laughs> I'm really feeling nerves. Any particular reason? the government. I mean, it's weird going there and doing a gun control thing. Oh, the Reagan Presidential Library. Because Reagan, as governor, there it is. had been instrumental in passing gun control because there were the Black Panthers who had armed themselves. And then he became president, and the uh, Black Power movement had been smashed. And so, at that point, it became convenient to be in favor of being able to carry guns around again. <laughs> I don't think you're going to serve any good purpose at all in disarming the honest citizens and leaving the other ones on. And this is the history of this thing that we're trying to actually reveal, is how this kind of anti-government protest became part of the NRA's DNA. Excellent, thank you so like much. Like they just figured out that if people start fearing that the government is going to take their guns, it's a great way to sell guns. It's happening. Shit. Oh boy. Presidential drive. Here we are. You get to the Reagan Library and you really feel like Reagan is there, and in fact he is, because he and Nancy Reagan are both buried there on the property. I might step out and take a leap discreetly in the desert here. The place has this sort of 70s, 80s vibe. They have fragments of the Berlin Wall, all kinds of like giant pictures of everybody that he was associated with, like the Ayatollah Khomeini. I must get a picture with him. Brezhnev. Uh, whoever else. <laughs> and then why, why the one mannequin? That was of the guy who used to carry the nuclear football. Oh. Hey, dummy. <laughs> the nuclear football is the little case that had the tube keys and buttons so that they could launch the, you know, Armageddon. And, and Reagan wasn't really with it no. by the end, so it was really important <laughs> to have somebody else also making that decision. He might have thought it was the blender or something. Yeah. He decided to make a daiquiri and... <laughs> We had a gracious yeah. host. She took us to the room. No. You go first. So. Are you looking for share the safety? Come on in. Hi. Hey, how are you? Yeah, nice to see you, yeah. This is actually Ronald Reagan on Air Force One. Of course, he's the one who could have ordered global annihilation. Well, thank God that that didn't happen because the other side knew that we were armed. And we knew that they were armed. But sadly, the Cold War and the end of the Cold War didn't make our cities any safer. I'm honored to introduce Hensley Cocker. Thank you very much, Todd. This program that I'm announcing today has been in development for a very long time. It's a buy one, give one program, like Tom's Shoes. 
Suppose you, a regular American citizen, want a gun to protect your family. You also want to help out someone in need. First, you choose a limited edition sidearm from a collection that's been hand-picked for this program. When you pay for your gun, a refurbished piece is sent to an inner city of your choice and delivered to a vetted and authorized resident. Our launch this coming Independence Day is only the start. Hello? Yeah, sure. Go ahead and ask me. It's, uh, I'm uh, in, in the middle of a launch event here. The pilot programs are uh, Philadelphia, New York, Baltimore. Uh, actually, I can't remember the rest, but it's all there on the website. We all know about the tragic attack in Orlando. That tragedy. Hello? Hello? For new missed calls. Share the Safety is committed to getting the word out that the only safe gay is an armed gay. And, and the big change, of course, is since Orlando, we're also, um, you know, arming homosexuals. That's another, another target community for this. There are already pink guns for women. And we could easily imagine designs that might complement a Philip Stark decor or a fine Versace outfit. So we are sitting in the getaway car and it's blowing up on social media big time. Mm -hmm. New York Times Magazine. Mm -hmm. Ah, the Boston Globe. Right, right. Excellent newspaper. Some people are actually yeah. thinking it's real, but then realizing it's a hoax. The NRA, right? Yeah, this is the NRA's Share the Safety program. And uh, why exactly has the internet never heard of it? I mean, I, I'm sorry, I'm not famous enough for you, <laughs> but I, I, yeah, hello? Which is why now we're going to send a second press release from the NRA denouncing this despicable hoax. Let's not play Russian roulette with what matters the most. Sorry, uh, you know, we're having a launch event right now, and it seems like there is a protester. Can I call you back in I want to minutes? say, though, there is one document that I don't have doubts about, and that's my gut. My gut, your gut, all of our guts. And I don't think the gut plays dice. Uh, look, folks, I'm sorry about the disruption here. This woman is refusing to leave. I've that's told her that, true. Uh, that security will come and remove her if she doesn't, so. Hello? Yeah, we um, have a little problem. There's somebody who's not supposed to be in the room who's come in, like a, a protester. Oh, their security's here. They're, they're gonna help escort her out, I think. So, you're leaving already? Right. She's actually leaving on her own, so I think we're, we're fine. ShareTheSafety.org is now available to the press for preview and will go live on Independence Day, July 4th at high noon. We just got a call from Virginia. It's probably the NRA. All right, who is this, please? Uh, this is Hensley Cocker. We share the safety. Are you, are you Smith and Wesson or are you with the NRA? Uh, with the NRA, not Smith and Wesson. Oh, okay. Um, so I just wanted to get some information about when you launched the program. Uh, when we launched it? Uh, we are launching it as we speak, actually. Can I ask which newspaper you're with? Hello? They hung up? Well, that was the NRA calling. All right, so we're gonna start packing up. Okay, let's go. Where, where's the exit? <laughs> so the NRA is saying that it's a hoax? Did they try to sell you an AR-15? <laughs> oh dear me, dear me. There's a schism within the organization that keeps some of the people from talking to each other, and I, I think that might be what we're a victim of. We're a victim of a schism right now. Because, you know, you sound to me like somebody who might, uh, say some bad things about the NRA. I mean, based on the loaded questions you're asking. I can try to get you through to some of the people on the opposite side of the schism. I mean, bordering on the ludicrous, those are your words. I did repeat them, but I didn't mean to. Um, that's we know a... that being shot is statistically unlikely, even though it's more likely in this country than almost any other. You guys have definitely been spotted by okay. security. We gotta get out of here. But ultimately, more guns Ow. does not mean more safety. You know, there's these emotions that have evolved for millions of years and used to make sense and now kind of don't. New Jersey, D.C., New York, St. Paul, California, United States. If all those people who have been part of this fear machine could just go, okay, I have this fear, it's real. Hensley Cocker, share the safety. How may I and help you? And just not jump to the answer that it presents. Man, things would be better. I am the program director. 
capital P, capital D, yeah. Today, the NRA announced a new program to get guns into the hands of statistically under Launching a new venture called Share the Safety. To some, it was an idea so crazy, it could have been true. An NRA spokeswoman denies everything Cocker has said, stating, This is just NRA a complete has issued hoax. a takedown request in response to a fictitious NRA website. website. It's apparently caused roughly 38,000 websites to get knocked off. Well, it's the ocean. The famous Pacific Ocean.